250 teams remain. Land is rapidly getting filled all across the world. Welcome to the penultimate episode of our EAFC 24 Global Imperialism series. I am so curious to see how this map is looking at the end of today's episode. But the first team up today is going to be Palestina, the Chilean club will be heading southeast, which means they glance the bottom of Colo Colo, and we have a matchup in Chile to start today's episode. Also, I did read the comments on the past few episodes, and I saw a few people saying that we should change the difficulty to world class for these games that we watch, because apparently it promotes more goal scoring and attacking, so I hope you guys are right. We're gonna try it out today. There it is, lads. It was an entertaining nil-nil for a change, but once again, the outcome is the same. We're off to penalties. I would say Palestinian were probably the strongest side out of the two, but Colo Colo get their penalty saved to start the shootout, which means they're going to get their saved as well. Oh my God. Nobody in these teams knows how to score a goal. There we go. Colo Colo find the back of the net for the first time today. Ken Suarez and Palestino. They, oh my God, that was a bad penalty and it probably should have been saved. Fuentes for Colo Colo sends the keeper the wrong way. Who is going to be the first to fall now that there is goal scored. What a penalty that one. Palacios for Colo Colo, sends it straight down the middle. De Villa, who's going to get it done out of these Chilean sides? Another penalty that could have been saved. And now it is sudden death. Oparzo is going to send the keeper the wrong way. So if Colo Colo's keeper can save this, it'll be game over. And game over for Palestino in the tournament. That should have been saved. My God. Wienberg for Colo Colo gets his penalty saved. If Salgado from Palestino scores this goal, they will imperialize Colo Colo, which they do. The challenger, the deserved winner, I would say, Palestino getting the win. That is going to send a 74 rated center midfielder to Palestino. And we now have another team imperialized here in South America. Off to China. It is Beijing. They're going to be going directly east, which means they're going to be jumping across the water and they're going to be taking North Korea. That is actually hilarious. Beijing imperializing North Korea. That means Ngardiu is going to get his third upgrade overall, putting him at an 81. But fellas, before our next spin, I wanted to say a massive thank you to you all for half a million subscribers, 500,000 subscribers. That is unbelievable. I've been in love with making content for as long as I can remember. This has been my life for so damn long. I'm so grateful that I get to entertain you guys each and every day. Whether it's your first time watching me or you've seen every video I've ever made, a massive thank you to you, lad. I'm so bloody grateful to do this. And this is definitely one of the proudest accomplishments of my life. Cheers, lads. Let's crack on. The New York Red Bull. They are heading northeast, which means they're going to have their first game here. New York trying to enter Canada as they approach Toronto FC. Toronto with the huge win over Montreal in their first game, meaning they have won Yama into an already impressive side on paper. We know how they've gone in real life. But let's see if Toronto can get another win here. They do not. The New York Red Bulls start their imperialism campaign off in the strongest fashion as they imperialize Toronto. That is massive to New York because they're going to pick up Lorenzo Insigne and Victor Wanyama, both of them heading to New Jersey. New York are going to get so much land here in Canada. And with Toronto being imperialized, that now means there are no Canadian teams left in Fulham. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, my favorite team, Fulham. We're gonna be going southwest, which means we're gonna be entering the area occupied by Everton. This is huge. Both clubs have been on an absolute roll in this series. Of course, Fulham, we've just built an insane side, but can we keep it going here? against Everton, trying to get ourselves land all over England and Europe. And this one is going to be another win for Fulham. And Kunku and Polinia are going to get us the win. We are looking so damn strong. Come on, Fulham. We're going to pick ourselves up a boatload of players, but the one that means the most is going to be Jordan Pickford, which is going to be an upgrade in between the sticks for us. Everton's run is over, and now Fulham have land all down the west-hand side of England and into the north of France. Come on, Fulham. Off to Turkey for the first time today. It's Sivaspor. They head west a little south, which means they hit this bottom area here of Kaiserspor, who is going to stay alive here in this all-Turkish affair. Kaiserspor 
or Siversport. Siver it is going to be Kaiserspor who come out here and imperialize their challenge. And it is going to be the attacking midfielder, Says heading across. I'm just wondering when we're going to see Riversport, Riversport in the action again. Holsten, Kiel. They're going to be going southwest. They narrowly missed taking on Werder Bremen and instead they have a matchup with Paderborn. It's a battle of the German second division. Both sides doing some solid business in this one. But who is going to continue on the path to glory? It is going to go to extra time where Paderborn are going to get a massive win against Holsten Kiel. Let's not forget that they have picked up players like Cohen Castile, who's now heading to Paderborn, along with Holstenberg, Hoya Fernandez, and the Australian Jackson Irvine. Now Paderborn are going to take the north of Germany here and make it their own. Back to Turkey, it's Adana Demispor. Demispor are heading south, which means they're going to come through here, narrowly missing this section of the Middle East, and they're going to scrape Egypt so now Adana Demispor, of course, they already own Cyprus. They're now into Egypt as well. I was praying it was going to be Mario Balotelli, but it is the right back, Svensson, going up to a 78. FC Copenhagen. Copenhagen are going directly west, which means, I mean, there was a pretty likely chance this was going to happen, but they are going to try taking down the juggernaut of FC Norsen. This game may just decide who wins Danish football. This is a huge matchup here. Both of these teams have been on a run, but who's running? is going to continue it is going to be Norseland oh my god Norseland's run continues and they have just taken down one of the biggest clubs in Danish football Norseland gets so many nice additions here they get class into the midfield vast to the defense and even more land now in Denmark this is beautiful to see man what a run they are having not only do they own a lot of England they now own the majority of the Nordic lands here or at least Denmark Damak here we go Damak Damak are heading directly north meaning they're not going to expand any further into Africa they're going to have an all Saudi Arabian affair here as they face Al Itihad Damak's run has been unbelievable they've added players like Riyad Mahrez and Toko Akami to their side their midfielder stance use got an upgrades to an 85. But can they take down the might of Benzema, Fabinho, Kante, all of these guys, and Al Itihad? The scoreline is an 88th minute winner there from Benzema, who is going to get Al Itihad the win. And so much land. What a way to enter the tournament. Riyad Mahrez and 85 Stansu are among the many players they're going to pick up here for this win. Now, Al Itihad get even more land here in Saudi Arabia, but they make their entrance into Africa. Birmingham City. Okay. Birmingham City are going north, which means they're going to be trying to imperialize Fulham. Oh God, we've got to be careful because Birmingham City got a huge win against Wolves last time out. So they know how to get an upset. This is the definition of a banana skin game here for Fulham. We need to get the job done. Birmingham have added Wallace and Jose Sarr to their squad. Will that be enough here? It is going to be a 3-1 win for Fulham. Come on, come on, come on. The dream's alive. Fulham, we're continuing second year in a row. We might be going deep in this tournament. We're not picking up any crazy players for this result, but we'll we'll take it regardless. We could get that final upgrade within England, though. That would be really helpful. Club Libertad. I think they're Paraguay. Libertad are heading south a little west, which is, yeah, they're going to get a little upgrade here. They're going to get a plus two upgrade, and they're going to go from having a tiny little bit of land in Paraguay to this whole southern coast, southern west coast, I guess you could say. Their center back, Barboza, is going up to a 76. Catanzaro. Catanzaro are heading east. A little bit of southern and it means they're going to land on territory they already have by the skin of their teeth. So we spin again and they go northeast, which means they narrowly miss out on a game with Pauk and instead are going to get another upgrade here within Greece. I already know that's for Donnarumma. He's going to get another plus two. Fair play. Down to South America again. It's Penarol. The Uruguayan side will be going southeast. Good luck, lads. All right, Penarol, they're trying to take down the juggernaut of Boca Juniors. Will it be Boca getting more land within Uruguay? Or can Penarol shake up both Argentinian, Uruguayan, and South American football? Let's find out. It is a comprehensive win for Boca Juniors. There has been no shaking up done today. Another addition to Boca's side, they really don't need. I feel like Boca aren't going to get any real benefit from winning in South America 
they're going to need to get moves in Europe if they're going to really make a move in this series. But Rodriguez, the 75 midfield, 75 rated midfielder, is heading to Boca. And Boca get closer now to conquering Uruguay. LKS Lodz from Poland, Europe. Lodz are heading northwest. Okay, here we go. It's a big one. Lodz are trying to take down Union Berlin, who have been on an absolute roll. Lodz have been steadily improving here throughout Poland, but on paper, this one looks like they might have bitten off more than they can chew before we head into it and before they're ready. But let's see if they can shake it up here and take down Union Berlin. They do! Union Berlin have been one of the standouts in Germany, but their run is over. They have been imperialized by the Polish outfit Lodz. Lodz may have just changed the trajectory of the history of their club forever. They're going to get the upgraded Benucci. They're going to get Berg, Brozicki, Kemp, Hauptmann, Kurdelu, Bande, wherever he is. Fair bloody play, Lodz. This is a result I don't think any of us saw coming. Lodz are going to move into Germany. And they're also going to... Oh, I didn't even realize that. I completely forgot. They're going to take Finland and the north part of Denmark here. Sorry, northern Norway, I should say. They're gonna take all of that land as well. And they're gonna take Iceland. What a massive moment for Lodz. And they're into Sweden now. My God, they're into Sweden where the area that Hammerby used to own. One of the most unexpected shakeups of the series so far. Fair play, man. Lazio, here we go. They've had one game in the whole series and it resulted in them taking down Roma and getting Dybala. For this time, they're going northwest, which is gonna see them trying to move further north here in Italy as they're attacking Cremonense. Dybala into the Lazio lineup. But Cremonense, let's not forget, they have players like Nico Gonzalez, Domenico Verratti, Baldanzi. They got some a nice additions. Will it be enough to keep their run going or will Lazio imperialize them? No! Oh my... Okay, Cremonense, hello. They're going to pick up Dybala and I assume Immobile? That is unreal. Cremonense with a huge result here. They continue to add to their impressive squad. Dybala moving again. Yeah, alongside Tiro Immobile. Fair play, man. Lazio thought they were going to be heading further north, but Cremonense, they head further south. Off to Will Ferrell's club. It is LAFC. LAFC will be heading southeast, which means we have an LA derby for our first appearance from LAFC here. Trying to take over the galaxy. I mean, that's what every team is technically trying to do in the whole series. Take over the galaxy. But LAFC is trying to take over the LA game. The upgraded Chicharito is on the line for LA Galaxy. LAFC have a star-studded side, including Giorgio Chiellini. Who is going to win the battle of LA? The Galaxy or LAFC? It is going to go to extra time where one of the nominees for MLS MVP in real life, Buanga, is going to give LAFC the win here over their rival. Chicharito, he's going to make the move across to the other side of Los Angeles. LAFC have now made their mark on the United States. Lavia Praha, we're heading to the Czech Republic for the first time in a long time. We don't even need to spin the wheel here. Slavia Praha are going to get themselves an upgrade as they're completely surrounded in this region. And that upgrade is going to go to their center back. Holes, their captain as well, who's going to go up to a 79. FC Ingolstadt, long time no see. Ingolstadt are heading northwest. They are going after Frankfurt. Ingolstadt... They really had no good options there, but they are challenging Frank. Frankfurt are the team to beat. They've taken down Ajax. They're all over Europe now. Their team just gets stronger and stronger. They've added Alderweireld after their last game. They are emerging into a juggernaut here in German football. But can Ingolstadt get a famous upset in the Imperialism series? Oh, they almost do. But it is Frankfurt continuing their run. But now Frankfurt officially share a border with Bayern Munich. If those two end up facing, that is going to be a crazy. Heart of City, the Bluebird. Heart of City will be going southwest, which is going to see them hitting the top of this region here in South England, which means we have a Welsh derby. It's Cardiff trying to attack Swansea. A Welsh club is about to fall. Is it going to be Swansea or Cardiff City? The Swans or the Bluebirds? Here we go. It is Callum Robinson and Aaron Ramsey combining to see Cardiff City getting the win over Swansea City. Aaron Ramsey scored 
Who's gonna die? Oh my god, Marco Silva doing the bicycle kick is back. Let's go, Marco. Oh, I love this. We go a massive result in Welsh football. Grimes is heading to Cardiff along with Mitchell. Cardiff City now have more land here in Scotland as well as mainland England. In England, it is Walsall. They can either get Fulham, Villa, or an upgrade. They're heading west, which means they are going to get Fulham here as they stray along the border. And to be totally honest, I hate that we've drawn Walsall here because we have absolutely nothing to gain from this. But we have seen many lesser teams take down bigger clubs in this series so far. I don't want Fulham to fall victim to this. Oh my fucking God, I told you. Oh my God. Are you trying to tell me Fulham? Oh, we've beaten West Ham, Everton, so many bigger clubs. But Fulham, we've been imperialized by fucking Walsall. Oh my god, Walsall have imperialized Fulham. That is one of the biggest upsets in recent history. And of course it comes against my club. Walsall are about to get, oh, they're gonna have a great team. They're gonna get Hyung Min Sun, Nkunku, Pickford, Palinja, Alvarez, Eze, Jose Saar, Tyler Adams, Asmir Begovic, Wallace, my god man, Cooper, Bielik, Dobson, bloody hell. And so many pl more players that I didn't even have on Fulham's roster because they didn't have the space and they didn't need them. So now I'm gonna move all of those guys over to Walsall. Now little old Walsall have gone from this area in the Midlands to they're gonna have all this land in England right here. And Walsall now share a border with Kylian Mbappe and FC Nantes. And I now have nobody to cheer for, so I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep. Another one of the big dogs are up. It's Nap. Napoli will be going northeast. Okay, they share borders in two different countries, but Napoli are going to be attacking Hayuk Split. And there is also an upgrade on the line here for this last little region in Croatia. And yes, I know Dinamo Zagreb are a Croatian club, but they are in Bosnia right now. So they technically, like that doesn't count. Like that's just Croatia. Hayok split versus Napoli. Now, if Napoli win this game, let's not forget Osiman is 94 rated through upgrades. And if they win this game, then Osiman's going to go up to a 96. Let's see if Hayek Split can stop that from happening and make Ossiman a player of their own. It is going to be not even close to a Hayek Split win. Napoli are going to get more land here globally and in Italy as they imperialize Hayek Split, which is going to send Levaya and Stravetsa to Napoli. But most importantly, Napoli are going to get more land in Croatia and Ossiman is now gonna be 96 rate. Stal Milik, they're gonna be going east, a little south, which means Stal Milik are going to be trying to imperialize Shakhtar Donetsk in the Ukraine. And if they can do that, a plus four upgrade will be on the line. Shakhtar have the massive advantage in this game. They, it's number one, their team on paper is so much stronger, but they have added Shaparenko and the upgraded Stepanenko is a force to be reckoned with. Who is going to win here between the Ukraine and Poland? It is going to be a comprehensive domination from Shakhtar Donetsk. Shakhtar will be getting Gedinga, Dikanu, and Walski. More importantly, however, though, is Shakhtar Donetsk moving in to Poland. What do Cabello, the club from the north of Venezuela, will be heading southeast? It means they're going to get yet another upgrade as they have so much room still to move in Venezuela. Rivero now up to a 73. AD Alcrason. Alcrason are heading northwest, which means they're dodging Lejanes again, who have so many star players, and instead they're going after Real Valladolid. Upgraded goalkeeper versus upgraded striker. Who is going to win the battle of the Spanish second division? Valladolid or Alcrason? It is Alcrason imperializing Valladolid. They're going to get themselves an upgraded goalkeeper here. Jordi Masip. Masip is going to be heading to Alcaston. That is massive. Not going to lie, my prediction was definitely on Valladolid, but 
Adkisson are going to pick up Geordie Matt. They claim a nice little bit of land here in Spain, but they share even more of a border with Lejeune. They also now share a border with Portugal as well, which is cool. Off to Ireland. It is St. Pat. St. Pat's heading northwest, which is going to result in an upgrade and getting them now right on the northern Irish border. And Mulraney entering the 70s up to 70. Fellas, I have something that I need to fix up from last episode. Late, like one of the last spins in last episode, Cologne drew Patronato and we ended up deleting Patronato because we found out they were in the second division of Argentina and couldn't find them in the Argentinian league. And we gave Cologne an upgrade, but I need to take this upgrade away from Cologne because Patronato are in the game. They got relegated in real life, but they qualified for the Libertadores, for uh, Europe, for Spanish domestic football, not Spanish. South American continental football. God, I can't talk. So we have taken that upgrade away from Garces and we are jumping into this match now that should have been played at the end of last episode. Luckily, Colin haven't been drawn again, so it's not going to affect anything and it's all going to be good. But let's see who wins. Ball in. And there it is. It's taken 110 minutes, but Cologne have taken the lead and got a goal in this game. And Patronato tied up right at the death. They get ahead of what a save by the keeper. Keepers up for Patronato. Are we going to see a penalty shootout? It doesn't look like it. And it looks like Cologne. Yes, there it is. Cologne are going to still come away with the win. So the map won't change, but instead of getting an upgrade, Cologne are going to get a 71 rated center defensive midfielder. Staying in South America, off to Colombia. Lima are going west, sorry, east. Oh my God, it's another upgrade for these guys. They just get drawn so many times and just continue to get upgrades. They're going to have all of Colombia to themselves, but Hernandez getting their left back. I think he's like, what, an 83 now? We are really setting up shop here in South America, Central Cordoba. They're going to be going north a little to the east, which means they're going to be trying to get into Paraguay as they are going to be attacking Guarani. Oh, that looks so weird. Hyung Min Sun in a Walsall kit. Playing at White Hart Lane. You love to see it. Regardless, we have a game to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Both teams with upgraded veteran strikers. Who is going to come out on top here in this clash? It is going to be a nil-nil draw. So we're off to a second leg in, in the Libertadores. All right, here we go. The second attempt. Camacho, the upgraded striker, of course, for Guarani. Is it going to be another draw? It is not. It is going to be Gurani who are going to get more land and they're going to move in further to Argentina. That is massive. Gurani's attack is going to be sick as well. They're going to have that 76 rated striker Rodriguez in their front. FC Mets, they have not had a game yet, have they? The Mets are going to be going southeast, which means they're going to scrape the tiniest little bit of section here in Strasbourg and we have an all French affair. Mets with their first game, Strasbourg with their second. Strasbourg added that striker Hennings from their last win, but it really does feel like their first big game, like their first proper game here. Here we go. Who's going to win out of the French sides? It is a comfortable destruction of Mets by Strasbourg. Strasbourg are going to get another addition to their back line here in Herel. And a nice little chunk of land here in the north of France. Real Sociedad off to Spain we go. Sociedad are going south, a little west. Thought they were going to have a game here against Burgos. But instead, Sociedad are going to get themselves an upgrade. Which may help them quite a lot here. It goes to their center midfielder, Mikel Moreno. Who now enters the 86 mark. Independiente Median, we're off to Colombia. Where is the Colombian side going? They're going south, which means we have a matchup here in Colombia. Independiente are attacking Aguias Dorada. We've already seen Independiente get results in this series. Can they add another addition to their squad? Aguias in the box. They get the header and they chip the keeper. Aguias Doradas taking the lead here. Median trying to find an equalizer, which they do. A nicely worked goal. Squares it back. Oh, he hits the post. Follow up. Oh, what a goal. Aguias, this is a great game. And Median get an equalizer at the death. They go for the long shot. Headed away, and that's surely going to be it. Aguias Doradas with a great win there. And we have another team imperialized from Colombia. So they're going to pick up the 76 rated right midfielder that Median got from their win over Nacional. And also a 73 rated goalkeeper here in Moscow. Goodbye. Independiente Medellin. Minnesota United, the club that owns a lot of cannabis. Minnesota will be going southeast, which is going to see them challenging New York Red Bull 
for a lot of Canada here. Basically, the whole eastern side of Canada. That upgraded Reno. So how is he going to go with his first test here? Timmy Puki up top for Minnesota United, taking on a Red Bull side that features Victor One Yama and Lorenzo Insigne. How's this one going to play out? It is going to be a 3-1 win for New York Red Bulls. They are starting to build a pretty good side here. The upgraded Reynoso is a huge pickup for New York, but the amount of land that New York now have is absolutely unbelievable. I think that now means Red Bull might have some of the most land in this game besides like Ruza Spore and probably Nantes. But we are headed back to Germany. Time to see what Stuttgart are up. Stuttgart will be going south west which is going to see them getting an upgrade here in what i believe is switzerland it is stuttgart are going to get land in switzerland going to go to one of the most informed players in european football it is garasa spending a lot of time in america we're off to see the san jose earthquake the earthquakes are heading northeast which is going to see a matchup with the top section here of fc dallas fc dallas have been one of the busier teams here in mls in this series they're putting together a really nice squad Arango in for the first time. Upgraded Illaramendi. What is this result going to be against San Jose? It is going to be another win for FC Dallas, who claim more of the West. San Jose aren't one of the bigger clubs in the MLS, but they are going to give up their right midfielder, Espinosa. Al Itihad. All right, let's see if they can defend their crown. Al Itihad are going directly south, which means they won't have a matchup with Al Halal, but that means they go into their African territories here. Spinning again, and Al Halal goes southwest, which, yeah, that's huge. It's our first game within Africa. Al Itihad challenging Katanzia. Sorry, Katanzia. Zaro, but that means if whoever wins this game because they're going country for country whoever wins this game gets a plus four upgrade and either Catanzaro are going to move into Saudi Arabia or Itihad are going to move into Italy. Catanzaro up against it massively. Can their 78 rated Donnarumma produce what would be a borderline miracle here to get them into Saudi Arabia? It is going to be the case! Oh my god! Donnarumma has just got Catanzaro a win. That is huge. Al Itihad's team is unbelievable. And the Saudi Arabian side have been imperialized in shocking fashion. I did not see that coming. Kareem Benzema is he heading to Serie B. He's heading to Catanzaro. So is Riyad Mahrez, so is the upgraded Stansiu, so is Igalo, Toko Akambi, my god man. Fair bloody play Katanzaro, that means as well that Donnarumma the striker is going to now go up to an 82. And Katanzaro find themselves in Saudi Arabia. Unbloody believable man. Radomiak, Radom. Radomiak are heading northwest, which means we have an all Polish affair here between Radomiak Rom and Legia Warsaw. Legia with the upgraded Hosway, who's their attacking midfielder and 76 over. Overall. Let's see how this one plays out in Poland between the green, white, and red derby, but it is going to be Legia Warsaw getting what looks like a pretty comfortable win here. Damn, and they played with 10 men for 83 minutes. Fair play. Warsaw are going to improve their defense here, getting Rossi and a little bit of land gained for Legia Warsaw. Chennaian FC. We haven't been to India in a very long time. Chennaian are heading north, which means they are going after the big dogs. They're going after Mumbai City. The thing that separates these two teams is glaringly obvious. Mumbai City have an 87 rated player. Stewart has been benefiting from these upgrades so damn much. 87 Stewart. Can he help Mumbai City get more land here in India? He does. Mumbai City with another win. And they're going to get a lot of nice additions to their squad. Because to be fair, Shania had got a few wins under their belt. They, so that means Mumbai City are going to get Hernandez, Victor, Adoy, and then the centre-back, Sirkovic. Mumbai City are on a tear in it. And that now means there's only three teams in India remaining. Will we see India fully imperialized by the end of today's episode? FC Andorra. Andorra will be heading northwest. Oh, with their first appearance in the series is going to see Andorra challenging Nantes. And if Nantes win this game, they're going to get a plus four upgrade because Andorra is its own country. There is a bit of a stigma and a curse around some of the players on these team on this team for Nantes that they are just absolutely cursed. Surely though, surely they're going to take down second division Andorra. The scoreline is, oh my God, 
Killian Mbappe has saved Nance's ass at the death there. Killian Mbappe gets Nance an 87th minute winner over Andorra. This is a huge pickup though for Nance because they're going to claim the country of Andorra. But that means Lafont now goes up to an 86 overall. The Pohang Steelers. Pohang are going northwest, which means they're going to try pushing into China and getting more land in the north of South Korea as they're taking on Shandong Taishan. This game has ramifications for just about every team remaining in Asia. Shandong and Pohang, two of the standout clubs from both China and South Korea, but only one of them can stay on here. And it is going to be Pohang. They're gonna reclaim land in Korea and move now into China. And they are gonna get some huge players in the process. Oscar is gonna join the midfield of Pohang and so many other players will as well. It's gonna take me a while to organize all of this, but someone who we're gonna to have to say goodbye to is Marouane Fellaini. There we go, Shandong. We're so strong, but it is time to say goodbye. Bye, Nacional. Oh, wait, this is, I think this is the team that has the really weird logo with the dog. Yeah, it is. Bye, Nacional of Peru. <coughs> They're going to be going northwest, though. Going to see them narrowly miss out on a game with Melgar. Not even narrowly, to be fair. They're just going to go straight up to this region and get themselves an upgrade. Just going to see the defensive midfielder, Albert, going up to a 71. Off to Poland once again. Zaglebi Lubin. Lubin are going northwest. Oh, they're going for the big dogs. They're going for SK Lodz, or rather LKS Lodz. If they're going to be a big team, I need to remember what they're called. Lodz riding high after imperializing Union Berlin. Zaglebi Lubin have only added one player throughout this series, and that is Kenneth Zahor up top. Is he going to be enough to get Lubin a massive victory? Yes, he is. Oh my God, Lubin. Lodz were one and done. Lodz get the massive victory over Union Berlin, but they're going to be losing all of their new players and their club and their land. Lodz are going to lose all these players and Lubin are get Benucci, Berg, Grozitski. This is mental. Lodz, we only saw you on the global map for a short period of time, but that, all these areas now are owned by Lubin. A lot of red just became a lot of orange. Rail Sociedad, here we go again. Are they going to get themselves another upgrade or a game? They're going to be going southeast, which is going to see them challenging Osasuna, both in the Spanish top flight. But you would say Rail Sociedad have a much stronger side. They got that upgraded Marino as well. How's this one going to play out in Spain? It is a win for Osasuna again. I can't predict anything in this series because I thought Sociedad had Osasuna done, but that is not the case. Osasuna with a smorgasbord of talent heading their way. Just like that, another one of the more recognizable clubs in Spain has been Imperial. Personally though, I'm still waiting on when we're going to see Barcelona. Well, it's not going to be the other Arsenal, is it? The club from Argentina are heading southwest. They could have only played Boca Juniors or Defensa. It's going to be tough regardless, but they are challenging Defensa. Defensa have had a decorated run throughout this tournament. Is it going to continue? They took down the previous champions in Estudiantes. Can they take down Arsenal? It is going to be another win for defensa the goalkeeper medina is heading defense's way and now there is officially no more arsenals in world football the simpasa they're going to be going almost directly north oh okay okay they're going to be challenging galatasaray here for this istanbul derby the business galatasaray have done in real life is unbelievable if you ask me their team is so damn strong some of the names they've signed in real life are crazy Will that transition over in to this imperialism series? They take on Kasimpasar and they get their first win of the series. And they're going to add two goalkeepers that they don't even need to their roster from the win. But I'm sure they're happy to get some land here in Turkey and make some moves. Vitoria from Portugal. And Vitoria will be going southwest. And that's going to make them the latest team to try challenging Porto. I mean, Porto haven't been challenged yet today. But they've had a workout throughout this whole series. I feel like every game has been a banana skin for Vittoria, but they've got another one here. Can they survive another challenge? Yes, they do. Another victory Porto's way, which will see the center midfielder Thiago Silva heading Porto's. Maybe this is a good thing for Porto. I mean, it kind of gives them a way if they head north again 
to get themselves into Spain. Into Miami. Look what happens. Lucho jumps on my lap and we immediately draw into Miami and the goat nest. Miami heading directly west, which means we're about to see the goat in action. It's into Miami challenging Austin FC. All right, don't mind Lucho walking across the camera, lads, but it's into Miami. Of course, Messi upgraded when into Miami went down to Cuba. Can they take Texas here? Into Miami versus Austin FC. And it is into Miami out of imperialism. Austin FC with the victory. And that is going to see Messi linking up with Matthew McConaughey as he now joins Austin FC. Oh my. So Austin FC are going to take South Florida and they're also going to get Cuba. It's another team in the Americas, Junior of Columbia. Junior are going to go Northeast, which is going to see them get another upgrade. I mean, it was almost impossible for them to get a game out of this spin, but they're going to get more land in Colombia. The Colombian striker, Carlos Baca, now 78. Palermo. Palermo are heading Southeast. So they're not too far below East here. So they're going to hit the bottom of Panathiakos, which means we have an Italian and and Greek game on our hand. Italy versus Greece, Greece here. Panathiakos have an extremely balanced side. They do have their captain Perez upgraded to a 78. Palermo with one win in the series so far. They did get themselves a striker. And it is going to be the Italians, Palermo, getting a win here. Not going to lie. I thought Panathinaikos had this one. That is a huge result. Palermo are going to head to Greece. That means Perez is going to be heading to Italy. Because of that result, the world has a little bit more pink in FC Volendam of Netherlands. This is might be, is this one of our last Dutch teams? That's right, fine order still around. There's two Dutch teams. Volendam will be heading southeast, which I'm pretty sure if what I saw just before is correct, means they're going to be facing Frankfurt. Yeah, they're going to be versing Frankfurt, trying to avenge Ajax and all the other teams they've taken out. Frankfurt have been unbelievably impressive throughout this series, but can Kual and Volendam stop the run? Here we go. It is a 2-1 win for Frankfurt. For a second, I thought I saw Volendam winning, but Frankfurt, their run is going to continue. They missed a penalty through Kramerich, and that means Feyenoord are now the only Dutch team remaining in global imperial. Now they share a border, more of a border, with Aston Villa, both from the Dutch side and the English side as well. A match between Villa and Frankfurt would Atalanta. They're going to be going southwest. So that we'll see Atalanta attacking Reggiana here in Italy. AC Milan are just like Barcelona where they just are chilling. Reggiana have been building out their squad throughout this series, but really like besides Verdi and D Di Gregorio, like they've made improvements to their side, but nobody's going to even threaten to join the Atalanta starting 11 besides Di Gregorio if they do get imperialized. So this is a huge opportunity for Reggiana to improve their squad for the future, which they do. Okay, Reggiana, they are getting some big upset results. Atalanta have been imperialized and Reggiana are going to become the newest side here in Italy to make additions for the best. That 83 Adamola Lookman who got upgraded early on is going to be going and starting up top for Reggiana, surely. They're going to be getting about six or seven more other players on top of that. Fair play. Reggiana, you've had a nice little bit of land, but now you're getting a chunk. You are getting so much of Italy here. Drom's God set. They're going to be heading directly south. Well, it's actually important that we notice that there was a little bit to the left because straight down the middle is basically just in the middle, but... They're going to be facing Odd, Odds BK. A debut match here for both of these Norwegian clubs. If either of them is going to go on a run, it needs to start now. Who is going to win this one? And who's going to be one and done? It is going to be Strom's God set. Easily. Odds BK added to the list of one and done. So that's going to be a new goalkeeper here for Strom's God set. And to be totally honest, I don't know if they need him. Welcome to the winner's circle, though, Strom's God. Manchester City. Oh my God, here we go. Man City are heading west. I know what this is. It's Stockport County. Please, Stockport. Please, Stockport. You are the chosen one. Please, Stockport. You've had some big wins next to your name. You're building a nice squad here. Please do everybody a favor and take down Manchester City. The universe needs it. The universe needs it to be balanced. Woodman, Casemiro, Tresor, we're gonna need you to, we're gonna need to lean on these guys. Come on, Stockport. 
Come on, Stockport. Come on, Stockport. Come on, Stockport! Stockport County! Come on! Oh my god! Stockport County have imperialized Manchester City. Nine shots from City to three. Stressor, the man they pick up from Burnley, from their win against Burnley. Stockport County have imperialized Manchester City. Oh my fucking god. I apologize for my French, but I do not believe it. Man City are gone. That means basically all the big teams in England, the top, top juggernaut teams are gone. Oh my god. There have been so many upsets in this season, and I am all here for it. Stockport County. I might go buy myself a Stockport County jersey after this. But now we have a we have a conundrum on our hands. We need to spin the wheel to see whether it's going to be De Bruyne or Haaland going to Stockport. Who is it going to be? This is massive, man. I can't believe we're even in this moment. KDB or Haaland? Is it going to push for Haaland? No, it is not. Stockport County now have themselves a midfield of Casemiro and Kevin De Bruyne. That's actually cooked, man. Stockport County are going to imperialize Manchester City. Off to France again. It is Lille for the first time today. Lille are heading northeast, which is going to see them trying to move further into Belgium as they attack Ghent. A fascinating matchup here between Ghent and Lille. Who is going to move into the other's country? Who's going to get a boatload of players added to their sides? It is going to be Ghent. The upgraded Kuipers is going to bag himself a goal or bag himself a brace. And Lille have been imperialized. The players that Lille picked up from other sides that are heading their way aren't anything crazy. But to get Jonathan David to your attack is really... That is going to see Ghent move further into France. Legia Warsaw. And I must say, I don't know if you can guys see where, where the wheel is right there. One above it is Barcelona. Legia Warsaw are heading northeast, which is going to see them trying to imperialize Jagalonia. Jagalonia have only got upgrades to their striker, Imaz, who is 74 rated. Legia Warsaw with a few wins and few upgrades to their name. A lot of Poland and international land on the line. And it is going to be Jagalonia. Their first game is a massive win against Warsaw. The upgraded Jose heading there along with the center back Rossi. Another team, probably the biggest team from Poland, eliminated. Off to Scotland, it is Dundee FC. They are heading northwest. Initially, when I saw that, I thought it was going to be St. Johnson, but instead, it is going to be a clash with Aston Villa. Aston Villa have an unbelievable side. Of course, they took down Arsenal in their last game, so... I mean, you would expect them to win this game, but given what we've seen in this tournament, who bloody knows? Oh my, okay, it comes down to the death. Aston Villa survive, but they had to wait for an 80th minute Emil Buendia winner off the bench. Even more, land in Scotland now goes to Aston Villa. Sarpsborg 08. Sarpsborg are heading west a little south, but that means they're trying to claim more land in Norway as they jump across the water here and approach Sandefjord. Neither of these teams have played a game yet, but Sandberg has got an upgrade to a 70, so he is on the line. Who's going to win this Norwegian clash? It is going to be Sandefjord. The team that is challenged comes away with the result. Sandberg is heading to Sandefjord. And Sandefjord are going to get all of this Sarpsborg territory. Rangers, the other side of Glasgow, are finally up. Are we going to have an old firm derby on our hands? Rangers are heading south, which means they aren't going to have an old firm derby. They're going to get themselves an upgrade, which is going to go the way of their captain, James Tavernier, who goes up to an 80 overall. Juventus. Okay, here we go, Juve. Juve are heading north, which means we are going to have a Turin derby on our hands. Juventus attacking Torino, and the winner will get a plus two upgrade as they claim this corner region of Italy. Juventus have been absolutely crushing it in this series so far, but form goes out the window on derby day. Can Torino shake up 
Italian football. No, they do not. They are absolutely humbled by their crosstown rivals, and Juve have officially imperialized Torino. Torino are officially a one-and-done side as Zapata joins Juve. And the upgrade to this region is going to see Szczesny going up from an 86 to an 88. Istanbul Spore from Turkey. Istanbul Spore heading east means a matchup with Bazistas looms. A lot of the Turkish teams have been flying under the radar in this series, missing out on games, but... We have two teams, again, that are making their debuts for the tournament. Besiktas was outside their stadium probably this time last year when I went to Istanbul, which is crazy. But here we go. Who's going to survive? It is going to be Besiktas. No real surprise to see that. They are going to pick up this defender, Delhi, but I'm not sure if they've... And there we have it. Another team from Turkey eliminated. Deportivo Pereira. They're going to be going directly north. Oh, they're narrowly going to miss out on a game with a Gias Doradas, and instead they're going to get themselves an upgrade here in Colombia. I feel like Colombia has just been consistent upgrades. To be fair, it's their first upgrade, but it is their striker, Rodriguez, going up to a 74. Off to Spain. Rail Betis are up. Betis are heading southeast. Oh, I thought they were going to have a matchup here with Almeria trying to get into Africa, but instead, Real Betis are going to get themselves an upgrade. So Boya Iglesias is going to go up to an 85. It's the Hungarian side. Ferenc Verossi, they're up again. They will be heading southwest. I was certain they were going to have a game, but instead they are heading into Croatia, which puts Dibu up to an 80 now. We have had so many upgrades lately. Garani. Garani are going to be going southwest, basically west, which means there is a lot of land on the line here. Garani are going to be challenging Tyres. However, the winner is going to get these two regions in the north of Argentina to be their own. So four upgrades on the line as well. Both these clubs with some nice additions throughout the series. Garani have been working on their strikers. Tucumán, of course, have 84 rated Pereira in the midfield. Who's going to survive and get land across Paraguay, Argentina, and Chile, it is going to be Atletico Tucumán. That is a massive result for them. And their upgraded Pereira is going to bag a goal. That means Tucumán are going to get themselves both a 76 and 75 rated striker. And those area upgrades means that Tucumán are also going to get themselves Pereira up to an 88. Casa Pia. The Portuguese side are heading south a little east. They're running from Cork City. What are you? What are you, scared, Casa Pia? You scared of Cork City, are you? They're going to get themselves an upgrade. But Casa Pia's upgrade goes to their goalkeeper, Batista. Oh, shit. Aston Villa. The Aston Villa are going to be going directly south. And I'm pretty sure that means it's Walsall. Or oh, is it? Or is it Reading? Directly south is going to be Reading. That little line there. Touches the border of Reading. Oh, Villa versus Walsall would have been huge. Third division Reading have the chance to do something massive. Can they shock the world or will Aston Villa get even stronger? Aston Villa absolutely thumped them. Besides a consolation goal there for Aziz, it is a dominant victory for Unai Emery's men. Aston Villa will be picking up a few players, but the only one really of note is Kyle Walker-Peters. Aston Villa now control even more of England. Off to Saudi Arabia, Al Tyra. Al Tyra will be heading southwest, which is going to see them getting another upgrade here within Saudi Arabia. They're going to take this region, but they don't automatically qualify for this because they haven't won a game yet. But that is going to see Misijan now up to a 78. Beijing FC. Beijing are heading northwest. My God, we're seeing so many upgrades. Beijing FC getting a lot of land here. They're now going to share a border with Rizespor as they expand their presence through China. And guard you now to an 83. Galatasaray. They're going to be going, I know what this is. I know what this is. It is going to be a derby matchup here. Galatasaray trying to imperialize Fenerbahce. It is one of the biggest fixtures on the Turkish footballing calendar. A game that I would love to go to in my life. Fenerbahce versus Galatasaray. Both teams with a win in this series. Who is going to keep the dream alive and represent Turkish football. It is Fenerbahce with an absolute domination 
on Galatasaray. Fenerbahce have imperialized Galatasaray. Lucas Torreira is the big name player heading across to Fenerbahce, along with the goalkeeper Dutoro. Ah, Fenerbahce, now the team to beat in Turkish football. I don't think you guys understand how close that came to being Barcelona, but it is Duisburg. Duisburg will be heading northeast. Gonna see them trying to imperialize Bayo Leverkusen. Duisburg did get the nice addition of Apple Camp to their squad after their last game, but. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough because this Leverkusen team is stacked. Here we go. A big game for... Oh, I was going to say a big game for Leverkusen because it could be a banana peel, but they are going to keep it going here. A 2-1 win for Leverkusen. And with the imperialization of Duisburg, I can now report, ladies and gentlemen, that we are down to 200 teams. Off to Brazil. Long time no see, but it's now time for Corinthians. Corinthians are heading east, which means we have an all-Brazilian clash ahead of us, lads. It's Corinthians versus America MG. Both these teams with some pretty nice upgrades throughout the tournament. Let's see if they pay off. Corinthians, oh, the keeper can't get enough to it. And Corinthians take the lead in this one. Corinthians, they make it two before half time. Corinthians on the counter attack, they could finish it here. They are Corinthians 3 0 up. And there it is, Corinthians with a statement victory. But it is an absolute haul here for Corinthians. They're going to get themselves an 81 rated striker, 81 rated attacking midfielder, 78 center back. 80 rated attacking midfielder and a 76 rated right back. And even more land here in Brazil. Back to Turkey we go, it's Antalya Spore. Antalya Spore heading directly south, which means they are coming for Adana Demispor, but they're trying to take the Egyptian part of Adana Demispor, meaning if they win, not only will they get a Dyna Demospores players, but they'll also get a plus four upgrade. What a way to announce yourself to the global imperialism this year it would be for Antalya Spore. Can they take down a Dyna Demospore? The scoreline is a penalty shootout win for a Dyna Demospore. Balotelli, Nani, all their players perfect from the spot. So Antalya Spore, it was a brave mission, but they are gone. Adana Demispor adding the goalkeeper leaked to their squad, but Adana Demispor are going to take this land. No plus four upgrade for them. FC Magdeburg. Magdeburg are heading northwest, which means they are trying to imperialize Paderborn. This could be an interesting matchup. Paderborn with some massive additions to their side after their last win, including Cohen Castiles in between the goals. Uh, they got Jackson Irvine as well, but Magdeburg... Can they start their imperialism campaign with a massive result here? No, they do not. It is going to be another win for SC Paderborn, as this time they're going to add a new winger to the squad, getting at Paderborn, beginning to rival Frankfurt for the most land in Germany. Borussia Dortmund. Hello. Dortmund will be going east a little north. Paderborn, you are up again. Attic into their squad, but do they have enough to take down the juggernaut of Borussia Dortmund? Here we go. Borussia Dortmund get the 80th minute winner. Attic scored in the first minute, which is a great introduction to his side, but it's also going to be the last game for Paderborn for Attic because... They've been imperialized after what has been a very impressive run. Paderborn, while they do have so many impressive players, not many of them are going to make much of an impact to this Borussia Dortmund side. Borussia Dortmund now have their second win to their name, but this time they get a lot more territory here in Germany. It's time. It's time. I saw it creeping up. They're not going to get missed by a fraction this time. Barcelona have finally been drawn. Barcelona begin their campaign by going southwest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going to have to... Barca fans, you're going to have to wait longer to see your first game. Barcelona are going to get themselves an upgrade, which means Robert Lewandowski goes up to a 92. Imagine him and Oshaman. They could be deadly. Off to Switzerland here. It is FC Zurich. Zurich are going to be going southeast. Upgrade for them. Okay, there's still a lot of upgrades available here in Switzerland. Zurich are going to get one of them. And that means Breaker. Breaker going up to a 77 now. Kilmanok. Kilmanok of Scotland. Kilmanok going directly north. They've got a game with Rangers. Here we go. Rangers with the upgraded Tavani in their lineup. Both of these sides. First games in the competition. Who's going to survive here in Scotland? It is Kilmanock imperializing Rangers with an 86th minute winner from Watkins. 
Rangers have been imperialized. I did not see that coming. 80 rated Tavernier now heading across to Kilmanock. And we're never gonna get to see an old firm derby. That is a massive shakeup. My God. Ah ha ha ha. Yeah, baby, it's that time. Psycho Rizza Spore. Get your Riz on, baby. Get your Riz on, John Joe Shelby. Rizza Spore are going south a little to the west, which is gonna see them get an upgrade as Rizza Spore is gonna get Kazakhstan. And John Joe Shelby. Shelby now enters the 80s. John Joe Shelby is 81 rated. FC Lorient of France are up next. Lorient are heading northwest, which we'll see an all French clash here between Lorient and Guangamp. Guangamp with the one win so far in this tournament. They picked up Fossorier. Can he make a difference here? as they take on League One opposition, League One opposition. No, he cannot. Makengo of Lorient is gonna get a hat trick and Lorient get their first win of the tournament. So that is going to see Cortet. And then where is this right back? Here he is, Fossarier heading to Lorient. And a little bit more land here in France is gone. Or at least occupied. Stuttgart of Germany up for another game. Stuttgart are heading south a little to the east. Interesting, all right. They're gonna be trying to get into Austria here as they take on Lassen. Stuttgart continuing to keep things ticking over in this series. Can they make a move further into Austria here? Or will we have a massive upset? We do not have a massive upset. That upgraded Garasse and the 86 Ginter helping VFB Stuttgart get another win next to their name. Some of these German teams are looking really good, man. And this is probably one of their least important upgrades, but Schmid is heading across. But with the imperialization of Lassenu, that now means there's only two Austrian teams remaining, and they are on either sides of the country. FC Annecy, they, oh my, I know where they're heading. I know where they're heading. The club that has Lacazette are going to be challenging Kylian Mbappe, Terrier, and FC Nantes. A massive game here in French football. Nantes have Lafont, who's now 86 rated, Terrier, Kylian Mbappe, but Annecy have been doing business themselves here. They've got Stevanovic, Savonier, Lacazette, the upgraded Payot. Let's see who stays alive in French football. It is Nantes on a penalty shootout. God, we knew these teams were close. But that just proves it. Nantes stay alive here in France and they're going to get some mean additions for it. Nantes get more attacking weapons here. Lacazette, Seven, yeah, all the players that I mentioned before heading across. And now Nantes add even more to their total from like all of this land in the world, my God. Rodet are now completely surrounded. Shakhtar Donetsk. They're gonna be going southwest. Shakhtar Donetsk already have land in Poland and all of the Ukraine, but that move means they are going to add Moldova to their lands. Stepanenko is the latest player through that move to enter the 90s. Gornik Zaba. They're gonna be heading northeast. I thought they were gonna have a game with Shakhtar Donetsk, but they take on another team that has a shade of yet orange that has a lot of land, and that is gonna be Lubin. And there is also gonna be an upgrade on the line here for this region in Poland for the winner. Gornik have been making good progress in this save, in this series, but we know Lubin. Lubin have been crushing it. Look how good their side is right now. Bonucci into the side, Groziki, Ishak, Berg. Let's see if they keep the run going or whether Gornik are gonna get a lot of land around the world. It is! Oh my God! Gornik have got the win. Their squad is gonna get phenomenally better. That is massive, my God. It's gonna take me a minute to sort out exactly all the transfers that are about to go here. I'll do that behind the scenes, but some massive players heading across. And that means Lucas Podolski is gonna get himself a plus two upgrade here for that extra land in Poland being claimed. We baby Jesus, we're gonna have to do a lot of work to this map now, my God. I mean, they move up into Sweden. They're gonna get Finland. They're gonna get the top of Norway. They get Get bloody Iceland as well. What a move. A lot of blue on this map now. SCR Altach. The Austrian side are heading north. I think that means they play Stuttgart. Yeah, it does. Altach, the side. One of the last remaining Austrian sides are going to be trying to imperialize Stuttgart. Can Altach avenge their fallen Austrian comrades or will they leave Rapid Vienne to be the last team in Austrian football? Here we go. They don't. It is another win. 
for Stuttgart as they continue their push through Austria. Another pickup here for Stuttgart, which they probably don't need. But there we go. More land in Austria for Stuttgart. Also, for those of you that may leave comments saying, why don't Stuttgart automatically get this land? This is a whole different country, this little circle. This is Liechtenstein. But fellas, that is where we are going to conclude part seven of global imperialism. 190 teams remain. We're going to make part eight, the finale, one of the biggest videos in channel history, if not the biggest. A new champion will be crowned in the next episode. It should be up Friday, everything going to plan. But I will see you guys for it then. Make sure you click here to subscribe if you are new around here. Click here to watch another video. I'll see you for the finale. Let's go, 190 teams.